Hello, and thank you so much for watching my short film, The Passion of Andalusia. I'm the director, Brandon Lee, and this is the director's commentary. So here I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how I made the film. I'm gonna show you some behind the scenes clips, some clips that had to get deleted. And in general, this should be a fun little look into the process of making this project. And if you wanna learn a whole lot more about how I make my short films, then check out the link in the description for my film school, Unscripted Studio, where you can learn from start to finish how I do every step of the process. Okay, first of all, how did I come up with the idea to make this short film? Well, I've been to Spain many times, and I've actually made a couple other projects there. I made a short film about the Semana Santa, called Thrones of Semana Santa, and I've made a couple short films about Catalonia, one called Dreamwalking Barcelona, and one called A Catalonia Story. I wanted to do another project that focused on the flamenco culture and captured the passion of that flamenco, because I felt like that was sort of the heart of Spain in a way, and especially the heart of the Andalusia region. So the research for this film was basically just going to a bunch of flamenco shows and seeing as many different styles of flamenco as possible, which my girlfriend and I love doing, so that was awesome. We were staying in Sevilla, and we started out with the really touristy kinds of flamenco shows, and then eventually we discovered the more underground scene, and that's what I really got interested in, because a friend of ours, Matias, brought us to this place called Bar Gonzalo. Bar Gonzalo was this little place on a side street in Sevilla that you would never find if you weren't looking for it. They didn't have regular shows, they just kind of had these impromptu jam sessions. I really, really enjoyed the vibe there, and I enjoyed the hot, sweaty, stickiness of being close to all these people, listening to somebody just sing their heart out or dance their heart out in this tiny crowded space because it just felt so real to me. It felt like this was the true soul of flamenco. So I went to the bar several times. I met a bunch of great people there, did a lot of shooting there. A lot of those scenes ended up in the short film. And then toward the end of my shoot, I found out the bar was gonna close down permanently. And I did an interview with Gonzalo because I wanted to be able to help him somehow to maybe reopen another bar later, spread the word about Bar Gonzalo a bit. So here's a little excerpt of what he said about his bar. Me llamo Gonzalo Molina y he estado aquí toda mi vida atendiendo a mis compañeros cuando han llegado. Flamenco puro lo que se es en los rincones y la taberna. Esto es una cosa que hierve, una cosa caliente, una cosa que una espontaneidad de, de gente que pasa por aquí, que tú lo has visto en más de una ocasión. Gente que ni siquiera conociste, que entran por primera vez, cantan y se van, que a lo mejor no vuelven más, pero al ver tú, cantan y se van. El motivo de por el que estamos aquí hoy, pues desmontando lo que tanto trabajo y tristeza me, me cuesta desmontar, pero era inevitable, todo acaba. So the bar is actually the house that Gonzalo grew up in, and now the building needs more repairs than he can afford. So I want to help him raise some funds to renovate before they condemn the building. I told him to make a PayPal account that people could donate to. So if you feel like donating to him, there's a PayPal link in the description of this video. You can donate any amount you want, help Gonzalo get back on his feet, because I feel like his place was really special, it was really unique. There aren't too many flamenco places like that anymore. Okay, so moving on to the shooting process of the film. This wasn't a project for a client. This wasn't a commercial. This is just a passion project, quite literally, for me. I try to do at least one of these a year. I really love doing these projects. I approach the shoot to this like I do most of my short films, where basically I just make a big list of things I want to shoot. I talk to everybody I know. I put out posts on social media begging people to help me out, and I see what access I can get to what kinds of subjects. So my goal here was to get behind the scenes of the flamenco world. So I filmed flamenco classes with Angel Atienza and Juan Povillo, and a class with Cristina Serrano. I filmed the making of flamenco dresses with Erica Andrade. And I filmed another dressmaker, Sarah Gomez, and I really liked the footage, but I ended up not being able to work it into the final edit. And I filmed the master guitar maker, Antonio Raya, making the flamenco guitar. So in the beginning of the film, I wanted to show how all these elements come together, and then the rest of the film would be sort of like a performance. So first we see the practice, then we see the performance. That was kind of the concept there. And I also wanted to give a bigger sense of the Andalusia region. So I took some trips to really interesting places like the little town of El Rocio, which is kind of like a wild west town come to life, and Setenil de las Bodegas, which has these crazy overhanging rocks in this little white village. I got to film a baptism, a uh, bautismo, in Sacramonte with some Gitano people, the gypsies. And then I got to film their parties afterwards where they made the biggest paella I've ever seen and also the best paella I've ever eaten. 
I want to thank my friend Vanessa Montero for getting me access to shoot that because otherwise I would have never been able to film Hitano Life. And I also filmed the Virgen del Carmen in Estepona, which is a festival to bless the fishermen for a good fishing season. So they take the Virgin statue, the Virgin Mary, and they take her down to the ocean and they put her on a boat. And then they take the boat around to all the fishing boats to bless the fishermen. If you're around any of the seaside towns in Spain in the summer, I highly recommend trying to see this festival. It's really cool. And a lot of other locations, Cordoba, Malaga, the Alpujarras, which is a region in the mountains that I highly recommend visiting. It's so beautiful. In general, I tried to go to as many places as I could within the amount of time I had. Okay, onto the filmmaking techniques that I used. I wanted the film to feel alternately very smooth and fluid and then very choppy and staccato because overall I wanted the film to feel like a flamenco performance feels where there are these passages that are just lyrical and sort of poetic and then there's these furious sort of hard charging moments where they're just stomping their feet and yelling and everything moves really fast and it gets your adrenaline pumping. So I filmed it in two different ways. I filmed with the gimbal to get smooth sort of flowing gliding moving shots And then I did a lot of shooting handheld with an intentionally shaky camera. So the camera here was kind of like another performer in the flamenco performances that I filmed. Because I was dancing around them as I ran around with my gimbal. I was trying to match the movement of the camera to the emotions of the person who's performing so that my moves accentuated what they were doing. And I pushed in really close to get all those facial expressions or to show the stomping of the feet because I feel like it's those details that really draw you into the drama. I wanted the audience to feel like they're up close and personal with everybody who's on screen. I wanna thank all the flamenco dancers. I got so many people who were willing to take time out of their day to go out, drive out and meet me. I feel like it really enriched the film to have these individual performances away from the stage, in the real world, on the streets, in a way that maybe you haven't seen before. The editing for this film took maybe two months. It's hard for me to say exactly because I was working on this and then I'd work on some other projects, then I'd come back to it, then I'd work on something else. So I can't really say exactly how long it took, but ballpark two months. I had about 1.5 terabytes of raw footage when I was done shooting. I don't follow a script or a storyboard or anything as I'm making these films. It's all just improvised along the way. I just have sort of a general arc in mind. Like in this one, I wanted to go from practice to performance. And I also wanted to show the different aspects of flamenco. I wanted to show dancing. I wanted to show singing. I wanted to show the guitar. I wanted to show the palmas, the clapping, because those are sort of the basic elements that come together to make the art. And the rest of it was just trial and error, just putting clips together, making little scenes out of them. If it didn't work, throwing them away, starting over, just repeat, repeat, repeat. And to make everything feel smooth in the edit, I do a lot of fluid transitions, which are those moments where one shot seems to sort of blend into the next shot. I use Final Cut X to edit, and I basically just do it through masking. You know, I use the draw mask effect, and I outline one object in one shot to create a mask around it, and then I place it in front of another shot, and I try to seamlessly blend the two shots together. And usually having one shot that has sort of similar motion to another shot helps them to blend more smoothly. So if like one shot's moving in one direction, then the next shot that comes in with the transition should be moving in the same direction at about the same speed and then they become sort of like one shot together. And these kinds of transitions have gotten really popular in travel videos, like everybody pretty much does them now. But I try to use them in a way that doesn't distract from the film too much. I try to just make them a part of the story so it draws you deeper into it rather than saying, hey, here's some cool flashy transition that I put in. This film was really about character. It was about the unique character of the region that you can see in the architecture and you can see it in the people and you can see it in the culture. And I wanted to have as much character as possible in each shot so that you come away feeling how unique it is to be in Andalusia. Okay, on to music. The music was so important for this short film because the film is about the culture of flamenco. So I wanted to give little snippets of different kinds of music throughout the film, but it was all driven by one track and that track is called Lambaca, and it's by a group called Calafato Tres Cuatro, Calafato Three Four. And I found that track through a friend of mine that I met in Sevilla, 
Juan Olaya. He's in quite a few scenes in the film. He just sent me a YouTube link to several of their songs and said, hey, check this out. You probably could use any of their music if you want in your short. And I said, yeah, wow, this song Lambaco is incredible. It just had this really gritty vibe to it that I love. And if you like that song, the band has a new album they just released. So check out the link in the description. So the early cuts of this film had the song Lambaca just looping over and over for seven minutes because I didn't know what other music to put in there and the song was just too perfect. But I knew I couldn't just leave it as a loop because that would be way too redundant. So to figure out how to complete the music, I went to another friend of mine, Stephen Richard Davis, who does composing in LA. He's done a lot of composing for TV and movies. And he's also done several of my other short films, Hong Kong Strong, Soul Wave, a bunch of others. So he came up with this incredible orchestral adaptation of their song. So in the final film, we start off with the original song, and then we go into Steve's version. Okay, so that concludes my director's commentary. I wanna thank everybody who helped out with this project. There were so many people who volunteered and donated their time, and I hope you're all proud of the way the film turned out. I know I am. And of course, as always, I wanna thank my lovely girlfriend, Kobe, because she was by my side the entire time. She carried my bag a lot of the time while I was shooting, and she was endlessly supportive throughout the shoot. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.